right, so this little video is about finding the MAD, and it's not uh, that kind of MAD, it's a different kind of MAD. It's actually a measure of the uh, variation of a, of a set of data, so it talks about how this data varies about the mean. So in order to work through this, we're going to have to, we're going to need some data. And so the data that we're going to use today is the guesses that you guys made about how many push pins were in the box. Remember the box that I showed you there? So how many push pins were in the box? And, uh, well, these were your guesses. They ranged anywhere from, uh, I don't know, 25 might be the lowest and 78 might be the most. Oops, 85, someplace in there. So it doesn't really matter what the guesses are. What we need to know is what's the mean of those numbers. And so we're going to use the technology, the TI-80, well, the TI-80, whatever, I've got an 84 plus on here, but the same thing as your 83s. And what I've done is I've taken that list of data that you have and I've entered it into my stat editor, which we know how to do because we've been playing with things. If I push the button right, it'll be all good. Um, so I've got them all listed in there, the same list of data. And I'm then going to, from there, I'm going to quit out of here. I'm going to go back to my stat editor, stat. I'm going to go over to calc. And this very first item on the list, which you can't necessarily see over there, is called one variable stats. There it is, caught up with us. One variable stats. I hit enter. And I'm going to tell that my data is in list one, so I do second and then L1 because right there, see where the blue, when I hit the blue button, or in your case, it's the yellow button, it gets you to all the things that are written in that color. When I hit the green alpha button, it gets me to all the things that are written in that color. But so one variable stats, L1, boom. Okay. Uh, what I end up with is that this first number is the mean, X bar is how we pronounce that. And so the mean is 43. Point Call it 7.7. Actually, let's call it 43.8 just to make our life easier. Okay, so the mean, go back to here, the mean is 43.8. Okay, we got that using the graphing calculator. So what we're going to then do is we're going to figure out how far all my numbers are from the mean. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to do 44 minus 43.8. I'm going to do 31 minus 40, 43.8. So all of these I'm going to subtract 43.8 from so you can go through and do that and we'll get a bunch of uh, we'll get a bunch of numbers and I'll uh, be right back with what those numbers are so believe it or not I'm going away for a second I'll be right back though all right there they are so what I did was I subtracted 44 minus 43.8 got 0.2 I did um, 31 minus 43.8 Okay, and I would have probably got negative 12.8, but since we're talking about how far, we want to worry about the absolute value of the thing. So we just took all of our values, whatever they came out to be positive or negative, and made them positive. Okay, so we figured out your guesses. From the guesses, we figured out what the average was, what the mean was. We took each one of your guesses and subtracted the mean from it to figure out how far each guess was from the mean. What we do to find the MAD is we find the mean of this list. Okay, so when I did this list, I added it all up and I got a total of 335.6. I divided it by the 26 entries that we had, and it turned out that the mean absolute deviation or the MAD was 12.9. So that meant that on average, the average person, you know, the average guess was 12.9 away from the average. So the average difference between all of these guesses and the average number was 12.9. So given about 40, you know, 43.8, that means that you know, most of most of us guessed someplace between 31 and uh, what 55, something like that. Okay. So that's how to find the MAD. We'll go through a step by step on this very next slide here, finding the mean absolute deviation (MAD). That's what MAD, what MAD stands for, the mean absolute deviation of a set of data. So we make an organized set of data, we find the mean, and then we find out how far each of our points is from the mean, find the absolute deviation. So that means absolute value. So we always subtract the mean from our data point. 3 minus 8 is negative 5, 6 minus 8 is negative 2, 15 minus 8 is 7, and we take the absolute value of that number, so 5, 2, and 7. And then we're going to find ourselves the mean of those absolute deviations. So we're going to add 5, 2, and 7 divided by 3. Okay, so that's how we find a mean, or is we add up the numbers divided by how many we are, 4, 
14 divided by 3. So in this case, the MAD was 4.67, which is a measure of how far the numbers are from the mean. So if the mean was 8, there's a pretty good range. You know, this one's 7 away from the mean, and this one's 2 away, and that one's, uh, what's 5 away. So on average, they were about 4, almost 5 away from the, from the mean. Okay? And so this next piece that we're wondering about is... Uh, how old is Mr. Tig? So I want you to actually work your way through this one. So the first thing you're going to do is to enter in and figure out how, how uh, yeah, figure out the mean of all of these numbers. So you're going to take the total and divide it by, uh, I think it's 26 numbers in this case. So the total divided by 26 is equal to the mean. Then you can do the absolute value of each one of these numbers, and then you're going to find the mean of that. That's how we find the mad. It's a measure of variability. gives us some indication about how things are doing relative to the center. One thing to, to bear in mind with the MAD, because it is a mean, you know, it's based on the mean, it's re, it is not resistant to outliers. Okay, so the MAD is not resistant to outliers, meaning if someone, for instance, put a really large number into the data, so say somebody said, oh, Mr. Tig, I think he's like 105. That would be an outlier amongst all these. Some of the, these 21s are probably outliers, and thank you for saying that. But uh, um, So those outliers are going to throw off my mean, and then that's going to throw off my distances from the mean, and then that's going to throw off the average of those distances, the MAD. So the MAD is not resistant to outliers. You know, outliers definitely affect it because it is a mean sort of a, mean sort of a situation. Okay, so try this one. See what you come up with for the, uh, for the actual number for the mean absolute deviation. Follow the steps. Use the table. Be organized about it. And uh, let me know tomorrow what you get or whenever you actually uh, get a chance to get this done. Maybe include that under the WSQ. I think that's all on the uh, mean absolute deviation, the MAD, measure of variability. Thanks for watching. I uh, sincerely hope that you learned something. We'll talk to you soon.